Wow. Screen. Next star broadcast. Right, let's go ahead and send up a prayer real quick. All right, Father God, we come humbly asking for wisdom, guidance, understanding, Father, asking that you continue to watch over us, continue to cover us, Father, continue to cover our loved ones as they deal with these pestilences, as we all deal with these pestilences and plagues that you have put forth on this earth, Father, as you're judging, judging this earth for our wickedness, Father. Uh, grant us a heart of repentance, a heart of, a heart of seeking you out, Father, a heart of being diligent, uh, within your word, Father, and keeping these law, statutes, and commandments, Father. Understanding that you are refuge, you are our covering, you are our fortress, Father. You are our ultimate protection that we trust not in in the in the in the in the science uh, falsely so-called, Father. But at the end of the day, understanding that um, all things uh, are according to your will, Father, and um, being being content with those things and that understanding, Father. And we ask all these things in the name of the Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Right, if you wait for the perfect conditions, you will never get anything done. Everybody see the screen? Oh. Ah. It says if you work for the if you wait for the perfect conditions. Uh, you will never get anything done. It's just talking about dealing with waiting on the perfect conditions. And I came with this because this was one I, I felt like this is one of my things that my father was doing was waiting to get that help, waiting to seek the help. You know what I'm saying? Not necessarily other most high, but um, to go, you know, and, you know, call the authorities or go and just set appointments up to get itself healed. Uh, being that uh, no one was here to watch the children he didn't want to really call me probably felt like I couldn't do it I probably couldn't at the time I probably you know what I'm saying I probably wouldn't have been able to um just take uh weeks or months off and um to for him to heal and to jump into a situation of you know taking these kids back and forth or trying to be something like a father and and, 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 and being in that role and um trying to wait on the Trying, for, trying to wait on the perfect, uh, the perfect plan, and uh, sometimes, man, that you know, you'll you'll never get it done. You'll never get in there and make those appointments that you need. Uh, you'll never step out there on that uh, that path that you need. You'll never go into that journey. Uh, you'll never start that new adventure, that new venture, that new business. Uh, if you're waiting on the perfect conditions, you'll never start that diet. You'll never start that workout. And uh, more importantly, you'll never, you know, for those who haven't given their lives and devoted themselves uh, to the most high, you'll never do that. Also, a lot of us uh, will have those things. We'll say, well, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, I got to get myself together first before I come to them. I got to do this. I got to do this, et cetera. Uh, but if we wait on those perfect conditions, uh, we will never get anything done. I right, start with uh, Matthew 6 and 33. Um, who or what comes first uh, in your life? I got a reader. Let's see if that'll work. If not, I'll get it. This is uh, the book of Matthew, chapter five, chapter 6 and verse 33. But seek, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things shall be added unto you. We seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Ultimately, that's what we should be. That's, a, that's what she, what she, we should be living for. You know, ultimately, uh, all of our plans should be um, pretty much set to live for that. Um, and that's pretty much one of the reasons I was able to... Um, you know, I was able to, to, to put myself in a situation to be able to uh, jump into this position is because a lot of those other things didn't matter to me. Um, and, and, and in that, you know, it, it, it freed up some things 
far as me just dealing with just trying to enter into the kingdom. Uh, anything outside of that can be adjusted or can be removed or can be, you know what I'm saying, postponed um, till later. But um, more importantly, first and foremost, that we're doing those things that to, to seek uh, entrance into the kingdom. Uh, stop waiting for the right conditions. Ecclesiastes uh, 11 and 4. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11 and verse 4. He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. Uh, I said, he As that thou knoweth. Go ahead, like, my bad. Like he that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. If we're looking at those conditions, and we're we're sitting up here, you know, like we we we're waiting and trying to get these things. That's why so we did that video with them ants, man. No matter what happened, those ants re went on ahead and rebuilt that that darn ant pile after I had ran over it with a uh, with that lawnmower. I'm gonna go back out there today, though. I got some stuff. Uh, my little nephew told me I got some stuff. I got I can spray on it. Um, but they rebuilt that thing immediately. Um, if when they seen the problem happen. They immediately went out there and built it. No matter what the weather looks like, no matter what the conditions are, um, if you're worried about that, you'll never, you'll never get started. Keep going up. Verse five. Verse five. As thou knowest, not what this is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. Even so, thou knowest not the works of God. Who maketh all in the nice. morning? No, so sow thy seed. Go ahead, I, go ahead. My bad. In the morning, sow thy seed, and in the evening, withhold not thine hand, for thou knowest not whether whether shall prosper either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. All right. So you don't. It's a lot of things that are out of your hand. You know what I'm saying? You don't know. You don't know if you're gonna have good. good. You don't know if you're going to have good weather tomorrow. You don't know if you're going to have good weather the next day. You don't, you don't, you don't know how children are um, are formed in the womb. And that's just going into just you not having a lot of a lot of control in a lot of matters. You know what I'm saying? You have little control. We have little control of a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? So we have to go ahead and just do what we can do. Um because we don't know the outcome, you know what I'm saying? He 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 gives the increase. All right. So we don't know whether it's gonna prosper or whether, you know what I'm saying, or whether it's 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 gonna perish. Um but we just gotta do everything in our in our in in, in our skill set or everything that we can possibly do uh to make sure that that outcome uh is good. But once we've done all we can, then you know what I'm saying, you gotta leave it into the hands of the most high. Uh, Second Timothy four and two. This is the book of Second Timothy, chapter four and verse two. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. All right, reprove, re rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine in season, uh, be instant in season and out of season. So, you know, what I'm saying, uh, whatever the case may be, man, you're not always gonna be up, it's not gonna always be lit, it's not gonna always be, um, uh, something that's it, it, that that pretty much is, um, idea, you know, so it's not gonna be always an idea circumstance. Uh, sometimes things are going to be um, where you have to preach this doctrine while you dealing with trauma or you have to preach this doctrine while you going through certain things. Um, and, and this is what this thing is going into, man, just being in, in, in season, out of season. You're not going to always be fruitful. Um, everyone has their season and my season may not be the same as your season. 
uh, but we still got to make sure that we're exhorting, uh, rebuking. And this is where it comes into that long suffering uh, with the doctrine. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I say it's not going to always be a uh, hook a door. You're not going to always want to wake up and go out there on those street corners and teach. Um, and, 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 it's nothing wrong with that. I know a lot of times fit names with something wrong with me. They don't want to go out there and da, 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 da. um there's nothing wrong with that, but you gotta you gotta make sure that you're you're dialing that in and um and understanding that we gotta, you know what I'm saying? It's just part of us being a slave to Christ that we have to go out there and um and do that. You know what I'm saying? Just like people go to be mad about going to work, you know. You know, white people, a lot of white people trying to pretend like they, you know what I'm saying, they all happy and stuff like that, but you know what I'm saying? It's kind of almost a, going into the same thing. Uh, don't worry about being qualified. Let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians 1 and 27. Take that phone back there with you. This is the book of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 1 and verse 27. But God have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And this is what we have to understand about uh, the way the Most High actually moves. You know, like he loves using the underdogs. And this is why we have to be humble as, you know, as Israel, we have to be humble, understanding that this is an underdog story and uh, that we are the weak, we are the foolish, but he's going to use us to confound the wise so that it exalts, uh, so that it ultimately exalts his name. Uh, keep going. And the, uh, and the and base things of the world and things which are despised have God chosen. And things which are Yea, and things which are not to bring to not things that are. All right, the things that are not to bring to, to, to bring to not things that are. All right, things that are nothing. I've chosen the things that are nothing to bring the things that are something to nothing. All right, I've chosen the base things of the world. All right, the things which are despised, the lower level things of this world, the, the things that are despised by this world. Uh, the most high have chosen um, to bring those things to not um, keep going. That no flesh should glory in his presence. Understanding that you, you no flesh should be able to glory in his presence because we understand that it was him that did it. It was his power that did it. The one thing that we could do in that. All right. So we don't have to worry about them. I'm saying a lot of times we don't jump into positions. We don't jump into um, certain roles. We don't apply for certain jobs because we feel we're not qualified. We don't feel we have the qualifications. But uh, Israel as a whole was not qualified. All right? And he chooses these base things. He chooses these foolish things to exalt his name, to be a greater testimony, to be a brighter light. It's pretty much how he operates. Let's look at uh, Philippians um, 2 and 13. <clears throat> this is the book of Philippians. Chapter 2 and verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. It's him that worketh Do in you. All right. It's God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure, which worketh in you both to will and to do. It's him in you that's making you do these things. Come on. Do all things without murmurings and disputings uh -huh. that ye may be blameless and harmless so the God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among yeah. whom ye shine as light in the world. And whom you shine like lights into the world. And see that again, going into those murmurs and the disputing, that's why I say you have to dial that, make sure we dial that thing in. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, some days you, you, you're not going to feel like it. 
You know what I'm saying? But you dial that thing in. You don't murmur. You don't complain. You don't you don't sit out there and be like, well, why you ain't sending nobody to hear the word? Why all these people just keep walking by, Lord? Um, you and, and that'll keep you from being um blameless and harmless, all right, without rebuke that, that can't be corrected. Um, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, in the midst of these crooked and perverse people, uh, where they won't be able to um throw any blame on you or say or say that you're a hypocrite. You know what I'm saying? Like the sister walked up to the camp and called us some hypocrites. Um, that one unity camp that we did. Um, and that we should shine as lights uh in this perverse world. Uh, so very important. Uh, Saul was doubtful of position. Let's look at 1 Samuel 9 and 15. So you just want to look at a couple of examples of people being, um, you know, of our forefathers giving certain excuses on why they can't get into these positions, why they can't become uh, these great leaders that the Most High needs them to become. And um, like you, you, you ain't going to never feel qualified. I tell brothers all the time, I ain't no. I ain't know somebody. Somebody had to tell me I was the leader of Prince of Power. Somebody was like, man, he the leader. And that, that was never established. We just jumped into roles that we, we, well, we had to jump into. And nobody wanted to do it. And why nobody wanted to do it? Because a lot of times we just waiting on, the, waiting on the perfect condition. Well, let me get stronger in the world. Let me learn more precepts. Let me study a little more and get stronger so, you know, I don't get confounded. And again, you mess around, you don't study. It's it going to take you to get confounded for you to study. <laughs> it's going to take you to get, get out there and get cut a couple of times for you to really get in the book and be like, you know what? I ain't going to let that happen to me again. I ain't going to let nobody catch me out there like that again. Um. You there first, Samuel? Did we lose Brother Dion? Let me see. About two minutes off my house, I can start reading this. Uh, let me see. I just want to make sure I, I'm trying to go back to my, trying to get out of the screen. Okay. Yeah, I think I lost him. I, I read in, uh, I'm, I'm here, man. I'm here. <laughs> I think I had hit the mute button. Oh, okay. Come on. This is verse nine and verse fifteen. Now, the Lord had told had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came, saying, "Tomorrow about this time I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel, and they save my people out of the hand of the Philistines." For I have looked upon my people because they can't I mean, I should, I've looked upon my people because they cry unto me. That's very important. Keep going up. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold, the man whom I spake to thee of, the same shall reign over my people. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is. And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place, for ye shall eat with me today and tomorrow, and I will let thee go. I will tell thee all that is in thine heart. And as for thine, uh, as for thine asses, that were lost three days ago, set not thy mind on them, for they are found. And on whom is all the desire of Israel? Whom is all the desire of Israel? It is not on thee, and on thy all, and on all thy all. And Saul answered and said, Am not I a Benjamite? 
of the smallest of the tribes of Israel, and my family, the last of all the families of the tribe of, of the tribe of Benjamin. Wherefore then speakest thou so to me? So why 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 speakest thou unto me? Is it is not thee? I'm in Shalakia, verse 21, and Saul answered and said, Am not I a Benjamite of the smallest of tribes of Israel, and my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Like, ain't we the poorest of the Benjamites who are the smallest tribe? Why are you speaking thou to me? Why are you choosing me? And I'm from the smallest and from, from the smallest of the smallest. All right. And being doubtful of his position um, as ruler. So these things uh, do happen. But we have to understand these some of the attributes of of the Lord, man, and how he chooses and how he uses certain individuals. Just the fact of you being doubtful of a position, just the fact of you um, feeling that you might shouldn't be there is uh, a, a good reason of why why the most I have chosen you. And, sh and you should be looking at that saying, you know what? I, you know that, that he's probably is using me. This is how he. This is how he operates. This is how he works. All right, Gideon wants a sign. Let's look at Judges chapter six and thirteen. Uh, this is the book of Judges chapter six and verse thirteen. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of? Saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this thy Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianite. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Yeah, how Behold, save Israel. Family, Come on. Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee. And thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. All right, so Gideon still wanted a sign. I think we're going to go back and see a few other things there. But um, did not the Lord bring us from Egypt? All right, so he wants, he wants, those, he wants those same signs. But more importantly, we see that same attribute. Uh, in verse 15, and he said unto him, Oh, my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? How am I going to save Israel? That's behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and, and, and I am the least in my father's house, and I'm the lowest of my father's house. And we see that also with David being, you know what I'm saying, the shepherd, being the youngest, being almost uh, almost an outcast, um, so to say. So, See these same attributes, and once we learn these attributes, we can see how the most high operates, and we can be assured that, um, you know, what I'm saying, even though we may have doubts of the position that we have been placed there, um, because we understand how the most high operates, you know, what I'm saying, so we can have more assurance when we're not out here asking the most high, well, send me, send me one more sign, Lord, just send me one more to let me know that you know I need to be doing this, or I need to be here, or I need to make this move, uh, etc. All right, Moses feels he's not qualified. So get Exodus 4 and uh, 10. <clears throat> this is the book of Exodus, chapter 4 and verse 10. His words getting smaller and smaller. Uh, and Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither here do, heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? 
or who maketh the dumb or deaf or the seeing or the blind have not I the Lord? That's what I'm saying. So we like, like you sitting here worried about your slow tongue. Listen, I already know. And who don't make the dumb? Who who make the dumb, the bluff, the the deaf, the blind? Like, like, is it not I? If I want to use you with your slow tongue, I'm gonna use you with your slow tongue. If I want to use you with your slow speech, I'm gonna use you with your slow speech. And that'll be developed. A lot of us don't understand that that we want to be these eloquent speakers and want to speak and use, you know, what I'm saying use these, you know, big words and, you know, we 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 picture ourselves, you know, speaking eloquently. And this is what Moses said, man, you know, because this is what these leaders are supposed to do. This is how you fire up uh, the regiment. This is how you fire up the soldiers. Um, you want to have that that eloquent speech. You want to be someone uh, that sounds smart. You know what I'm saying? As and as a leader, and people, and you want to be that way because people, that's what people gravitate to. But that ain't how, how the most high is planned. That's not only how you want that thing planned. All right. He's, he wants it to be through to show his power. So you may not have that eloquent speech out of the gate. You know what I'm saying? That'd be something that you actually develop. Um, verse, where we at? Verse 12. Verse 12. Now, therefore, go. And I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he see thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth and will, and will teach you what ye shall do. And ye shall be thy spokesman unto the people. And he shall be even, he shall be to, their, to, to thee instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be to him instead of, a, of God. And thou shalt take this rod in thine hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. All right, so pretty much, most I pretty much set Aaron up to be like uh, a puppet. You know what I'm saying? And, and Moses being the puppet master, having his hand in Aaron uh, to speak the words of the Most High um, and transferring this thing down. Um, Almost, you know what I'm saying? Um, well, I ain't even gonna take it there, but I ain't going to no Trinity stuff. But you see, you see, you see the most high, you see Moses, and then you see that thing ushered coming out of um coming out of Aaron uh through Moses and from Moses through from the most high. Um and this is all because and you, and you see the anger of the most high kindled against uh Moses because he still he he still was doubting he still didn't really want to he still was murmuring a little bit and didn't really want to jump into that thing and we also see in verse 17 that Israel uh the most high understands Israel's gonna need those signs and he said make sure you grab that rod in thy hand that you can take that to do these signs these wonders for these folks because they ain't gonna really believe you until you do it um you have forgot the first works Let's look at Jeremiah 2 and 32. This is why it's good to, to understand. I say it's, it's good to understand uh, the attributes and how the most high um, works the chessboard. And how he moves his pieces. Um uh, and when we understand that, we understand we're one of these pieces. Uh, we'll understand better how the most, why the Most High is moving us, uh, the way He's moving us, and um, we won't have so much anxiety uh, when we're being shifted. In the time of trouble, uh, we run it away. Uh, Jeremiah chapter two and verse thirty-two. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter two and verse thirty-two. Can a man, can a maid forget her, her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. All right, my people have forgotten me days without numbers, man. 
and they it, it, it ain't that they just forgot uh Yahweh, but they just you know forgot his goodness, forgot his mercy, forgot how he operates, forgot how he how he how he granted them salvation and brought them out of Egypt, forgot the testimonies. Um <laughs> Let's look at Revelations 2 and 4. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left my first love. Thou hast left thy first love. Uh -huh. Remember. Therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. All right, and so we see him, brothers, we see in the great fall away where people candlesticks are being removed, man. Where the candlesticks are being removed, where that fire has been blown out. You know what I'm saying? So we got to make sure that we still meditate in on the word, that we're still zealous uh, for the word. Um, let's look at Judges chapter six and uh, verse seven. We got to remember our first love. I thought we were going to go back to uh, getting and remember some of the first works. Which is this covenant, man. This covenant on Sinai. Judges, what is it? Six, okay. This is the book of Judges, chapter six and verse seven. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drove them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. You have not obeyed my voice. And you start fearing these deities. All right. And then we talk about the works. Um, you know, I've delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of all the other people that oppressed you and given you their land. All right. Moved you or moved those people out and given you uh, this land of milk and honey that these people were initially in. Do we know the prophet? Do we know the prophet that was sent here to Gideon? We don't know this prophet. And it's prophet, and, and, and I'm only bringing it out to say that, you know, there's probably a lot of prophets at the most I use that didn't make the book. Um, but, um, you know, just to keep that in mind that, you know what I'm saying, it ain't just, you know, the, 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 what we see in the book, the Malachi and the Isaiah and the, and the, um, the Micah and the Jeremiah's. Uh, but there was there was prophets even used during judges um, that were sent out. But, you know, they, you know, ain't, of course, they ain't get no book or nothing like that. But um, these prophets still sent out to give to help Israel understand that you've forgotten uh, the first words. Um, are you denying yourself? Matthew 16, 24. I initially did, I revamped the class, I initially had it about, um, you know, us denying ourselves and putting God before ourselves, um, but I kind of just wanted to revamp it towards um, us jumping into, into purpose, you know what I'm saying, us not being afraid of purpose, and us seeing opportunities to jump into purpose us seeing those opportunities and be like, you know what, this is an opportunity for purpose. Um, 
let me not let me not squander this. Let me jump into this and uh and elevate spiritually. Uh Matthew 16 and 24. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 16 and verse 24. Then said the Messiah unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Keep going. Keep going. Yes, uh, verse 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. All right, he shall reward every man according to his works. All right, so whosoever try to save his life uh, will lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for, for, for his name's sake uh, shall find it. All right. And so, again, we can't, you know, we, we have to deny self. Um, and a lot of times uh, we are thinking about self-preservation, um, you know, whether it's preserving a certain identity, whether it's preserving a social status, whether it's preserving um, a job or a financial status, um, rather than jumping into purpose, rather than um, seeing the opportunities um, to jump into uh, a spiritual purpose um, or assignment that the Most High has placed on your heart. Uh, and you know that, you know what I'm saying? Only, only, only you'll know uh, the calling that the Most High has placed on you, that fire that he's put into you, that you've been kind to, um, you've been trying to hold back or you're trying to, you know, you're fighting off with your own uh, internal uh, murmurings and disputings and self-doubt. All right, and that can kind of deal with, um, go into uh, not trusting uh, but let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 19, verse 27, forsake, uh, forsake for his name's sake. This is the book of Matthew chapter 19, 19 and verse 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And the Messiah said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall sit upon twelve thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone that hath forsaken, that everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last and the last mm -hmm. shall be first. Many that are first shall be last and, and, and forsaken brothers, sisters, mothers, house, land for his name's sake, like for his name's sake, not just, not just forsaking these people. Um, and, and it's not giving any glory that, that forsaken of people that forsaken of houses, it should be to glorify the most high's name. So if it's not doing that, if it's not, if you're not, if that cut off with those people does not, uh, um, is not for the most high's name or is not to exalt his name, um, then it's in the wrong spirit. So we got to be careful of that also to make sure that we, we're making, un making that understood there too, that it got to be for his name's sake. And then if that is the case, uh, that person shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit, uh, everlasting life, uh, with doing so. Uh, does your how shall I truly understand Matthew 6 and 19? But we do get into that a lot. Um, 
And just like Moses was making certain excuses, just like Gideon was making certain excuses, man, I'm I'm just like and, and trying to trying to tell the most high, like, man, you know that I'm you know, I'm from the poorest tribe and I'm from I'm the least in my family. Um, explaining these things like the most high doesn't know that already. And he understands our situation. You know what I'm saying? So it's you know, when we when he asking us to do something, um, you know, we gotta be careful with, you know, he understands my heart and and etc. You know what I'm saying? We gotta do what we can do. If we know we can do it, then uh we need to be doing it. Matthew chapter six, verse 19. This is Matthew chapter six and verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust do corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. All right, give me Matthew chapter 10 verse 37. It's dealing with storing up those heavenly treasures, um, making sure that we're doing those things. Have you seen that reciprocity that you will receive a hundredfold uh, for forsaking certain things? Again, that's almost like a foreign exchange. Uh, we spoke on this several times, dealing with that foreign exchange and, and that reciprocity of the kingdom. Um, knowing that those things that you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and those things that you uh, release on earth shall be uh, released in heaven. Uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. This is Matthew chapter 10 and verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth me, followeth after me, is not worthy of me. Is not worthy. So we can't put anything mother, father, sister, uh, son, daughter, uh, before the most high, we got to be picking up our cross. Uh, we got to be picking up our cross and following uh, after him. And if we don't do that, we don't pick up our cross daily. Uh, we don't mortify our flesh daily. We don't we don't place ourselves on that sacrificial altar daily and die a little bit daily and, 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 and to kill ourselves, to live for his purpose. Um, we're not going to be worthy of of that um of that blood that he shed uh it can show a lack of trust you waiting on the perfect condition proverbs chapter three and verse five This is the book of Proverbs, chapter three and verse five. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Uh, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. All right, he'll direct thy paths. Don't trust in our own heart and lean not in our own understanding. Psalms 37 and uh, four. Psalms 37. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 37 and verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. All right, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. And if we commit ourselves to him and trust in him, he's going to bring um, these things to pass. Let's look at Jeremiah 17 and 5. We got to trust in him.
This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he should be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when God cometh. When but good. Shalaka, go ahead. When good cometh. That's what I was saying, when good cometh. Oh, my bad. Uh, and shall not see when good cometh, and uh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not and not inhabited. Blessed is, keep going. Yes, sir. The last verse. Uh, blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope for the Lord is. All right, it says, "Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm." All right, for he shall be the heath in the desert and shall, and shall not see when the good cometh. Because we'll be so 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 dependent um, on man, on science falsely. So we won't, you know what I'm saying? We'll be blinded um, in our dependence of someone else that we, we won't see uh, when opportunity comes. We won't see when good comes for us to be in a, in a, in a, in a land that's more fruitful. And rather we will stay in a wilderness, whether we'll stay in a, in a, in a dry land and not see when good cometh um, because of our trust in man rather than our trust in the Lord. You know what I'm saying? We're waiting on heat. We're waiting on the weather man to tell us uh, when the rain is going to come instead of us trusting in the Lord and trusting in the prophets and trusting in the testimonies. Um, just like Elijah, when he went down there to that, when he had that, that rain, most I kept that rain back for three and a half years. And he sent his servant out to um, to go out there and to see if the rain was going to come. Because the most I told him that the rain was coming. He sent his servant out there seven, seven different times. Um, and then the servant finally seen this small cloud. And um, Elijah got word. He sent word to King Ahab and told him, hey, man, that rain is about to come. And uh, imagine if Ahab would say, you know what, uh, you know, some of our sorcerers told us that the rain wasn't going to come for another six months. And, and um, you know what I'm saying? They, you know, they're more proficient with this thing instead of listening to thus says the Lord. And they would have stayed in that dry area. They wouldn't, they wouldn't have went back um, and received the benefits of that rain, of that latter rain. So we'll let we'll let we'll let our trust in man blind us uh, spiritually. Our trust in man will blind us spiritually. Um, you know what I'm saying? Well, we won't send up prayers just like somebody being sick. Uh, we won't send up prayers because of, you know, the equipment or because we feel like, you know, what I'm saying, you know, that they have the science to um, to overcome these certain ailments. But even when they science fails, they're going to tell you to. They're going to send you back to that prayer. They're going to say who you, what, what God you believe in. And you need to send up some prayers to that, to that, to that Lord. All right. uh, first Peter chapter three and verse nine. It's only a few more slides. This is the book of first Peter chapter three and verse nine. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contr contrary wise blessing, knowing that ye are there unto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Understanding that you shall inherit a blessing. See, when you know that you're going to inherit a blessing, you ain't got to render evil for evil. Contrary wise, you can render the evil for a blessing. You can render the railing for a blessing. You don't have to go tit for tat. Understanding what you already inherit. Understanding that you're already a ruler. Understanding that you already inherited the kingdom. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 36. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 10 and verse 36. Uh, for ye have not, for ye have need of patience that 
after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. That you may receive the promise. You're going to need patience. A lot of people be sitting up there saying, well, when when he going to return? Why he ain't returned? Been 2,000 years, he ain't returned. I had my sister calling me today, this morning. Well, my dad just, you know, she's just going crazy. What, 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 what room are you in? What they tell me? I, did you call today? Did I call him today? And he said, he up, 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 up. They, they call him. Up. And so you need to call up there. And she just going crazy, all anxious, all, you know what I'm saying, over, you know, just, just emotions flying all over the place, um, over things that ain't in her, in, in her control. You know what I'm saying? If things that ain't in her control, man. We're going to need patience. You know what I'm saying? That some of these prayers that we sent up, that uh, they're they going to they reach up, that they'll be heard. Especially when things are out of your hands. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 18. We just read that. 30 and 18? Oh, no, no, no. My bad. My bad. Sure. Isaiah 30 and 18. <clears throat> this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 18. And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment and blessed are all they that wait for him. Based on all they that wait for him as he waited for us. See, we saying here talking about, like he's waiting on us. Look at his patience. He's waiting on us to cry out. No, we still don't feel we need his help. We still, like I say, we still kicking the bobo, man. Even with these pestilence and plagues that's going on today, man, we still, you know, we, we still out here kicking the bobo, man, like ain't nothing going on, man. A uh, few things are necessary. Luke 10 and 38. Yeah, to understand that also, man. It's very few things that are necessary. We have our goals and our attributes and things that we want to do, man. But we know a lot of times, man, that stuff is railroaded. Stuff gets shifted. Um, and a lot of this stuff, you like I say, a lot of this stuff we don't have control over, man. We just, we're really just adapting to circumstances. We're really just adapting to certain problems, man. You know what I'm saying? The slightest thing can shift us. Arguments can shift us and make us go into another employment, make us go seek another job, make us go out of state and then move to another location. You know, just just simple things. Um, but we have to understand that, you know, there's, there's few things that are necessary. And this is how you guard your peace. Also, you know, what I'm saying this is how you have that perfect peace. Um, now, Isaiah 26, three. Um, Understanding too, man, that they're, they're just on this few things are necessary. All right, most high understands that you need to eat. I said, ain't nobody starving. Or that last camp we did, uh, we was talking with this elder man. It, it, I think an elder always be there with the bicycle, always be there at the bus stop. But it went to this one brother who got up there. And he was saying that, um, that we hungry. You know what I'm saying? Like we hungry. And of course, you know, I went to the Matthew 4 fold, come up, we need to be hungry for the word, etc. But uh man can't live by uh bread alone. But um I was telling them, man, ain't nobody starving out here. Ain't nobody starving on Candler Road, man. You sit in front of that Dawn Burger King or that church's chicken, and you can get you some fresh hot chicken within 30 minutes. And um that elder walked over there and said, Man, you right on that one. And the elder started giving, start, start, start praying the scriptures out for about, for about 10, 15 minutes, man. I ain't never heard him say one word. Uh, you know, all the years we've been out there on camera, but he came over there uh, that day and uh, started speaking for about 20 minutes with us, man. He said, you right on that one, man. They don't need no food now. They do not need food. But it's few things, few things are necessary out here. And a lot of times, um, you know, we work hard to cook food on the table. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We work very hard. Food is very expensive. We work very hard to put food on the table. We put very hard to to um 
to have a roof over our head. You know what I'm saying? Those things are getting even more expensive to have vehicles, etc. But we have to understand that those only a few things uh, that are that are truly necessary. Um, and uh, we see Martha here chose um, uh, Mary. Mary chose one of those good parts. Let's look at that Luke chapter 10 and verse 38. This is the book of Luke, chapter 10 and verse 38. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also, also sat with the Messiah, sat at the Messiah's feet and heard his words. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, Doest thou not care that my sister have left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. The Messiah answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Right, Mary chose that good part, All right, that shall not be taken away from her. Yeah, the things the house needed to be straightened. Yeah, you need to. Yeah, you you know it's it's good to 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 get the place and make sure that you know what I'm saying everybody is served. But uh, that one thing that is needful is to sit at the foot of the Messiah to guide His word, and um, that was not going to be taken away from Mary. First uh, Timothy one and fifteen. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. I can't move the slide. First Timothy 1 and 15, you see it? First Timothy 1 and 15. Everybody see the slide? It went out uh, for a second. I mean, I see it in the corner. It's, it's not like a... Uh... It's not big? Oh, wait, no, no, I see it now. You got to tap on it. You got it. Yeah, I see it. I don't. First Timothy, what'd you say? One in 15. First Timothy. Okay, let's see it now. This is the book of First Timothy, chapter 1 and verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all ex, uh, acceptation that the Messiah came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. All right. So we have to understand that the most came to uh, save sinners again. So we don't think that, you know what I'm saying, we can't be called into this thing or, or that it's not a good time to give ourselves to the Most High, to devote ourselves to the Most High. Um, thinking about our past, letting our past hold us back, letting those past convictions, those things that we were guilty of of our past, how tainted and and and, and distort our past is, how wicked we were. Uh, we don't let that hold us back. Um, understanding that He came into this world to save sinners. Um, and Paul saying, "I'm chief of. I right? ain't no sinner. I'm a chief sinner. I'm a top sinner because He was persecuting." Um, persecuting the church, persecuting Christians. Uh, let's look at us, uh, Rock chapter 2 and verse 2. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2 and verse 2. Set thy heart aright, and constantly endure, and make not haste in time of trouble. I set thy heart aright, constantly endure, and make not haste in times of trouble. Drop down to verse, I'm in mean, uh, chapter 5 and verse 7. Chapter 5 and verse 7. We got to constantly endure, uh, and, and make not haste in time of trouble, man. It's not going to always be idea it's not gonna always be uh bright and sunny in the perfect weather all right you're gonna have to do this thing in storms you're gonna have to you have to stay faithful 
um, it, in shipwrecks, all right, when you've been bitten by vipers, all right, facing persecution, you still gonna have to stay faithful and not make haste. So, Rock, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter five and verse seven. Uh. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed. I am awesome. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You finish it up. And perish in the day of vengeance. And perish in the day of vengeance. I right. made no tarrying. To turn to the most high. Don't put it off uh, from day to day. You know what's in your spirit. And not just turning to the most high, but also jumping in purpose. You know, a lot of us, you know, we on this call and we, we don't turn to the most high. But we about that jumping in purpose. Um, we may be we may be on the fence about that, um, on what we need to be doing, or how can we be better servants, how can we be better slaves uh for Christ. Uh, let's look at uh, Psalms 119 and 59. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 59. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. All on my ways and turn my feet unto the testimonies. Understanding those first works. Um, don't know thinking on your ways. You know I'm saying you you know what's burning inside of you. Uh, you know what zeal the most has put in you. You know what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and it's on you to act upon those things. But I don't want you to be waiting for the perfect time or the perfect spot uh, to actually uh do it uh ecclesiastes three and um and one This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 and verse 1. I'm going to read 1 through 8. Con. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. All right. Ultimately, it's his timing, man. His time is uh, for every season. Every season has its timing. It's not going to always be the time to plant. It's not always going to be the time to uh, uproot that was, was planted. It's not going to always be the time to love. It's not going to always be the time to hate. Uh, it's not going to always be peace until we enter into the kingdom. But it's, um, it's a time and a place for everything. All right, every for every season. Uh Jeremiah 29 and 11. Oh, Jeremiah. Oh, 29, 29. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29 and verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. 
Then yeah. shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And I will hearken. It says, I, for I know the thoughts that I have towards you, um, the thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. All right, so we we understand that, you know what I'm saying, both of these things been running. I know we've been going over that, uh, understanding that um, I did that class on free will, did a video on that. Uh, to help us understand that, you know, it, it's this thing, it's already been written, but your choice is on the same, on that same uh, pattern with him. Um, and so he's already written, you know what I'm saying, that 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 hopeful expected end uh, for us all. So ultimately, it, it, it's, you're going to do it when you're supposed to do it. All right, Proverbs 27 and 1. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 27 and verse 1. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. I boast not thyself for tomorrow, for you don't know uh, what tomorrow will bring. Uh, you don't know what tomorrow holds for us. Uh, so, we, you know, we always say, you know what I'm saying, y'all willing. Um, I think that was the last slide. Anybody got any questions? All right, with that, ma'am, say shalom, y'all. I appreciate y'all uh, coming in um, and appreciate the prayers, you know what I'm saying, for my family. And uh, continue to keep us in prayer. And I definitely continue to keep the body in prayer as um, this thing is affecting all of us. With that, I say shalom. All right, shalom. All right, shalom. Shalom. <laughs> I have been not just coming.